Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Here's my review for Ernest Goes to Africa. I just want to start off and saying I like this I like this film a little bit better than Ernest Goes and then, then Slam Dunk Ernest. Because I just could not get into the childish style of Slam Dunk Ernest where it's like a parody type humor. Um, where it's almost like a parody type humor, I mean, where you the where the character can just do absolutely anything. I mean anything at all. Like they're playing basketball and he can take out like a, take out like a ping pong ping pong paddle. And uh, hit the basketball with it and knock it into the goal. That kind of shit, I just can't deal with. Like, that son of the mass shit, I really hate. Because that kind of comedy just seems so out of place in the Ernest films. The Ernest films have always had, like, really silly comedy to them. But it's been entertaining silly comedy. And it's at least been grounded somewhat. Uh, when you get to comedy like that, it's just too over the top for me. Too zany. Um, but... Jump into this film. I enjoy this film slightly a little bit more than a Slam Dunk Ernest. I actually think that this is a passable film. Like an okay film, I mean. It's an okay film. Uh, it's a it's a passable two stars. An okay film. Um, well, no, an okay two stars, I'd say. Yeah, an okay two stars. I really don't think this movie's bad. I just think it's weak. I just think it's really weak. And it's got a lot of shit in it. It doesn't even feel like it should be in an Ernest film. <clears throat> But um, just jump into the film here. You got these uh, these guys who still like these um, diamonds from this tribe in Africa. Uh, they take them, um, and then uh, they take them from the tribe. Uh, and then this other guy steals the diamonds off them, and he hides them in a yard sale. Ernest is trying to impress this girl named Renee, who is a waitress. And she, um, the, the actress I believe that plays Renee is the same girl from uh, Ernest Goes to School and Ernest Rides Again. Um, she, from my opinion, she looks the cutest here in this film. Um, she's fine. She's been in two other films, Ernest Style, so she's had lots of practice by now, before now. <laughs> but, uh, she's fine. Jim Varney, once again, he's fine. Even though, like I said, the writing of the Ernest character with the, uh kind of stuff and all that kind of shit is getting a little bit old by now, you know, like, ninth movie in or whatever <laughs> but still it still has charm i can't help but like it even slam dunk Ernest, that i think is a bad movie i still think it's an enjoyable bad movie i'd say kids would probably like slam dunk Ernest. i mean honestly because of the magic shoes and everything um it's it's a bad movie but it's still an, it's still an enjoyable bad movie i mean it's it's Ernest. i can't hate him no matter what i came really close to hating slam dunk Ernest, but I don't. I can. I own the movie. I can still watch it and have it, even even though it's a bad movie. Like script wise, it's horrible, but I can have an okay time with it still. Just even just because it's earnest. I mean, honestly, I can. Even though even though it's a bad movie, some actors are just able to make bad movies entertaining. It doesn't matter. Like Leprechaun, which will be my next franchise. Warwick Davis makes those movies entertaining. So, to jump back into the plot here. Uh, and the guy hides the diamonds at a yard sale. Ernest finds them. He wants to give them to, to Renee as a gift. He takes the diamonds and fucking paints them and turns them into a yo-yo. I thought that was funny. And about, like, stuff that doesn't fit here for an Ernest movie, some of the stuff in this film I feel like is way too dark and too harsh for an Ernest film. I just don't feel like it fits the tone of Ernest. Like, uh, the guy who stole the stuff, the, the... I mean, the guy who stole the stuff from the bad guy who stole the diamonds first. Um, he gets caught... Um, and they force him to talk by threatening him with a snake, and then once they get out of the vehicle, the the bad guy who stole the diamonds first, he takes a bunch of snakes in a bag and pours them through the top of the limousine, I believe it is, or what vehicle, or whatever kind it is, and, and kills him. The guy's dead. He kills the thief. And I'm like, damn, man, that's killing a dude with a bunch of snakes like that. It's pretty hardcore for an Ernest film. I mean, I mean, any other film, I'd probably like it, but... It doesn't fit the tone of Ernest. It just feels out of place. And you got this other joke where Ernest is messing around with the yo-yo and he actually knocks his pet fish on the floor and he tries to save it and he puts it in the fucking sink and, and kills it by putting it down in the garbage disposal. And I'm like, that just seems way too dark and morbid for an Ernest film. It just doesn't seem like it fits. And then eventually, of course, the bad guys think Ernest is some kind of secret agent, like Agent 32 or whatever. Um, that same shtick I've seen in a hundred other movies, <laughs> but, um, 
where like it's a really goofy character, but the bad guys still think that he's a lot smarter than what he is. But uh, anyway, so they want to go after Ernest, and they think Ernest is like his contact. They think is Renee the waitress. So they kidnap her. Ernest goes to save her. Um, you get like this kind of humorous scene. Well, before I get into that, when Ernest first goes to to save her. Um, he shows up there. Jim Varney does. And the fucking bad guys just decide to ship them to Africa. Just ship them to Africa. It's like, they just want to ship them there, but just in case, so the bad guy can use him against this other guy who's a prince who paid him to steal the eyes of a goalie is what the diamonds are called, the eyes of a goalie. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? But it's just it's just a fast plot point. I mean, it's just a way to get Ernest to Africa. I mean, he has to get there somehow. I mean, why the fuck would Ernest go to Africa? I mean... I think Africa is a really beautiful place, to be honest, me personally, but why the fuck would Ernest go there? But anyway, but, um, so they gotta just fast track it and make up some excuse for the bad guy to take Ernest and Renee there, but whatever, you know, I don't give a shit, as long as they get there. So they, they get to Africa, uh, and you get, like, some shots of lions and stuff, and it all looks like footage that was, like, kept over from some kind of animal documentary or something and spliced into the movie, in a way, kind of. Uh, you do get some kind of charming stuff, though, with the animals and stuff. Like, a big lion opens up its mouth and yawns, and you got, like, this really uh, goofy yawn sound happening at the same time as the lion's yawning. I like that. That was that was neat. Um, then you got Jim Varney. <laughs> He's good here still. I still love Ernest. I still love the character. I can't help it. Uh, Jim Varney, just, he just brings me laughter. He's there, <laughs> and the bad guys have got him in a sack. He falls out of the back of the vehicle and falls down into a river. He gets out of the sack. And there's an alligator there. I believe it's, it might be a crocodile. Um, it's there. And uh, to be, he, Ernest takes his fucking fingers and jabs it into its nose and pulls them out. And it's got snot on his fingers. And he's like, eh I know I hate that still because it's gotten a little bit old. But every now and then it still cracks me up. It just does. I can't help it. I just find it charming. I can't help it. I just, I'm a Jim Varney fan. But, um... So you you got that humorous scene. I like that. Um, Ernest goes to save Renee. Ernest dresses up like his uh his old lady character. He goes in there with these ashes, pretending like it's Harold, like his uh his dead husband Harold. And he's gonna throw the ashes away. He throws them in the uh the bad with the the henchman's face, and he goes, "Thank you, Harold. That was the most noble thing you've ever done." I thought that was hilarious. Like I'm saying, this film kind of loses the childish stuff. And just goes for more of like just an earnest adventure story, which is why I like it better than the last film because the childish stuff is you know not there. The more silly kind of humor, like with the paddle, uh, fucking fucking paddle hitting the ball into the goal and everything, and Ernest being able to write his name on the backboard and floating there for a few min for like a minute and nobody even noticing <laughs> that that's really abnormal, but whatever. Um, but anyway. So, and then he takes the, the thing that he had the ashes in and fucking knocks the henchman out with it. Um, I like that. That was funny. And so he rescues Renee. They get the fuck out of Dodge. And basically, you just get Ernest and her in Africa doing goofy shit. But you get stupid shit humor here, too. Like, Ernest has, like, got to go in the woods to get some firewood. And he goes, just let me put on some bug spray. And he sprays it, like, right in his mouth. Like, right in his face like that. Like, point blank. And I'm like, Ernest ain't that dumb. I mean, what's up with this shitty writing here? But uh, he goes into the woods, and he takes a bunch of equipment with him to ward off the animals. And you get, like, this little kind of neat little shot here where it's a bunch of cartoon eyes in the woods, and it's supposed to be, like, all the eyes of the animals. It's really cartoonish, but a cartoonish scene like this works because, you know, it's just one second, and it's not overly cartoonish, and it's not, like, a big point, a big part of the plot or anything. It's just, like, one second, and I thought it, had, I thought it was a little bit charming, and I liked it. Um, so he goes into the woods, and you hear all this sound and stuff. Of course, he has a chainsaw he takes with him. He takes bananas, too, to bribe monkeys in case they try to attack him. And I'm like, he's got a whole thing of bananas. Why don't they just eat that? But whatever. So, And he's got a chainsaw. He could just go chop down wood anywhere in the forest. But whatever. There's no logic here. But he goes into the woods, and you hear, like, all the animals attacking him and duking it out with him and everything. He comes back out, and uh, he's like, well, yeah, you can just keep the chainsaw. I thought that was hilarious. That shit cracked me up. And, uh... So, uh, more stupid shit is, like, Ernest is, like, how they wake up the next morning, he's, like, sleeping on top of the, the vehicle that they stole and took off with to get away from the bad guys, and he's, like, uh, kind of looks like a paperclip, 
and he falls off the, the top of the vehicle and he starts walking around like hunched over and he does it for like felt like two minutes felt like an eternity um but uh that little him like hunching over like that for so long it took him he was like hunched over because of where he was sleeping like a paper clip and it took him a long time to get into the vehicle that shit got old fast and then of course uh how do you do get this one humorous scene where this tribe is there and Iris goes I'm, it's okay i know how to talk to these people and he goes up to him he's like what's what up dog <laughs> i thought that was funny um, and then, of course, Renee gets kidnapped again. Uh, Ernest goes to save her, and she's at, like, a harem. The prince has got her at a harem. Um, he's got her dressed up as one of the harem girls, and she's, uh, gonna, he's gonna make her dance for her and everything. And Ernest shows up there dressed up as a woman, and you get some more goofy stuff where Ernest eats, like, a watermelon or something like that and spits out the seeds as if they were bullets or whatever. Uh, goofy shit like that. But you get a funny scene here, though, where the prince thinks Ernest is, like, super sexy for some reason. And uh, he goes to, like, kiss him, and he actually kisses him, and he finds out it's a man, and he, the prince starts freaking out, and Ernest looks at the camera and goes, ooh, I thought that was hilarious. That was that was funny. That was funny. Uh, and then uh, him and uh, Renee knocks over these baskets that's got a bunch of snakes in them, and Ernest and her get, get the fuck out of Dodge. They get out of there. They get away again. Uh, eventually, her and Ernest run into this... Uh, other tribe. I don't feel like they take full advantage of the Africa setting. I feel like he could have done more. I would like to have seen Ernest interact with, you know, some lions or some zebras or something, but I don't think the film had the budget for that kind of thing, because I'm sure, like, training lions and shit like that and all that, or getting trained lions and stuff like that is probably kind of pricey for a low-budget film, but still, it would have been, it would have added to the film. But, uh, so they get away again. Um, you get some overused jokes where Ernest is like eating a plant. She's like, I didn't know, and Renee looks at him and goes, I didn't know poison ivy was edible. And Ernest goes, uh, hey, look over there. Uh, and he's like, uh, he starts pouring some medicine down his throat or whatever, like doing it behind her back. Um, that's okay. The kind of jokes where Ernest like says, hey, is that a rabbit over there? Or, hey, is that a zebra over there? Or a lion or whatever, all that kind of shit. Uh, jokes like that, hey, is that, you know, whatever, so-and-so over there, just, you know, look the other way while I do this behind your back. Those kind of jokes have really been worn out. But, uh, so eventually, Ernest, gets ca Ernest and Renee get captured by this tribe, uh, and the main bad guy, the guy who stole the eyes of a goalie first, shows up there. Um, Ernest manages to make friends with the tribe because Ernest can do tricks with a yo-yo. Uh, oh, and another scene in the film like, uh, after the prince uh, had kissed Ernest and find out Ernest was actually a man and uh, not a harem girl, he, like, has these uh, two, uh, his two uh, goons or henchmen or whatever I mean who captured a uh, grenade. He has them, uh, like, putting a hole in the ground and has an elephant, like, stomp on their head. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, man, this is just way too harsh. It's, like, too adult. I mean, too adult for an Ernest film. I mean, you had some kind of scary stuff and Ernest Scared Stupid, but it was more like magical stuff, you know, like the troll turning people into dolls and stuff. That fit that movie. Here you got, you know, an elephant stomping people, you know, running over them while they're in, neck deep in the ground. I'm like, shit. <laughs> this is too different. Uh, too adult. But, um, uh, anyway, um, and so eventually, uh, they're captured by the tribe who wants to eat them. <laughs> Uh, and Ernest actually sees somebody else they ate there, and he does the, you know, the uh ho thing again. And that was mildly amusing, once again, after he, after he sees somebody that they ate before. Um, one thing's funny is when the Ernest finds out they're actually going to eat him, he goes, well, wait till they get a hold of that poison and Ivy. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was funny. Uh, and then, of course, the Ernest ends up making friends with them because he shows them the yo-yo tricks, and apparently they're really impressed by yo-yos. Um... And so the bad guy shows up there, and uh, he challenges Ernest to a duel um, as he wants to duke it out with Ernest. And he still wants the eyes of a goalie from Ernest. He wants to kill Ernest and take him. The bad guy still doesn't know that the yo-yo is actually the eyes of a goalie. Uh, so they get into a fight, and it's kind of a neat little ba little battle here. Uh, it's kind of it's childish, and it's got some of the, the zany humor that I didn't – I mean, more of the cartoonish humor that I didn't like in the last film. And Ernest, or and Ernest goes to school, but – here it's 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 uh, it's used minimally. It's used as a minimum. It's not overdone like it was in the last two films. Here, like uh, Ernest is hiding behind a a, uh, a table, and the bad guys like slicing parts of it off with of the axe. And there's like one little tiny board left, and uh, 
Ernest is like hid behind it, even though there's no way possible he could be. And he like looks over behind the board and he's like, ah, you missed me. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I like, I see, I like that because it's minimal and it works. It's cute, but not overly cutesy, and it's cartoony, but not super cartoony. And then uh, Ernest pops up behind him, and he's like got a, a stuffed animal in his hands, and he, he hands it to the bad guy and goes, here, you want to hold Teddy? And then he knocks the shit out of him with a pound of bologna. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned in these movies is Ernest actually fights pretty good. The worst I've ever seen him fight was in Ernest Goes to Camp, but in most of the other films, he's able to duke it out pretty good. And even at the end of Ernest Goes to Camp, he... Uh, knocks the, the big uh, construction worker guy out. So I just find that funny. That Ernest does have a little bit of battle skill. Not so much that he's good in fisticuffs, but that he's just really crafty. Um, but anyway, um, he knocks the bad guy out with some bologna. The bad guy gets back up. He starts slicing the bologna with the sword, and little pieces of it are falling on the ground. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> it's getting a little bit too childish here, the battle is. But uh, he keeps coming after Ernest, and Ernest manages to use the, use the yo-yo and knock him out with, knock this dude out with, with a little, he knocks him out with a little tiny yo-yo, and I'm like, what the, okay. But anyway, uh, of course the yo-yo breaks, and it's it, the tribe sees it, it's the eyes of a goalie, uh, the, the diamonds that, uh, that were stolen from him, or the jewels or whatever, and they get them, uh, and then Ernest uh, gets Renee, they head back to the United States, or Cleveland, I believe it is. <laughs> According to Renee, anyway, I'm sure. Um, all through the movie, Renee is talking about how she wants a really super adventurous guy and talks about how Ernest is just an ordinary, you know, schmo type guy. And Ernest actually considers himself an ordinary schmo when I'm like, why? You fucking saved Santa Claus, battled a troll. Uh, you, what more do you need to, to do to not be a schmo? But anyway... And now she's realized that she doesn't really want an adventurous guy because now that she's been on an actual adventure, she wants an ordinary schmo. And so she doesn't want to be with Ernest now because he's too adventurous. And I'm like, okay. But anyway, Ernest never seems to get the girl, which is kind of sad. But um, but anyway, and then at the end of the movie, uh, Ernest has brought her an ostrich egg as a present, and she turns Ernest down because she wants an ordinary schmo again. And Ernest has put it in his hat, and he puts the hat on his head, and of course, it all it sets up for it, and he just cracks the egg on his head, and he does the, which is so predictable. I would have dropped the movie down lesser than two stars for that, and probably would have brought it to about the same thing as I did Slam Dunk Ernest. But the last bit of scene here kind of saves it for me when Jim Varney is standing there, and the egg is like running down his face, like right down to his like close to his mouth, and he looks at the camera and goes, "Does that it who thing again?" That kind of made up for it for me. It's childish once again, but it's kind of made up for it for me. Because it just, it was just charming. I liked it. Um, so all in all, this is an okay two-star film. It's nothing amazing or anything. Um, as far as the films go, it's better than Slam Dunk Ernest. Um, it's better than Ernest Goes to School just because it's more of just Ernest in a random adventure doing stuff in, instead of... Uh, Instead of Ernest in a really cartoony type, instead of Ernest doing like really cartoony Son of the Mask style comedy, um, so it's slightly, so it's inadvertently because of that better than uh, Ernest Goes to School and Slam Dunk Ernest. Um, it's it's probably about almost even with Ernest Goes to Jail, almost Ernest Goes, to, but it has better. The weak effects at the end of Ernest Goes to Jail almost kill that film. Uh, or, well, not almost kill it, but weaken it a lot. I say it's almost as good as Ernest Goes to Jail, or at least on the same level. Um, it's, an, one of the, it's one of the okay Ernest films. You can watch it and be like, well, that's over, you know. Out of the Ernest films, you know, it was, a, it was a time waster, you know. Not too bad. But, yeah, I'd give it an okay two stars. This has brought the franchise up a little bit for me after fucking goes to school and slam dunk about killed it for me. This film has brought it back up a little bit for me. Not much. It's at least brought it back up to Ernest Goes to Jail level. So I'll see you guys again with Ernest in the Army, the final Ernest film.